Oh, yes. Real change. <laughs> That's what it is. The reality of change. <laughs> Kevin, I just thank you for being the instrument uh, to bring this to the world. And um, it will take some time for people to really um, get acclimatized to it. I feel like because I had a near-death experience, a near-death experience is really a paradigm shift. Whether you want to or not, you shifted from one place to the other. So I had already done the paradigm shift. But I think what it's doing now for me, it's kind of a, adjusting, it's making adjusting, making adjustments. And it's, it's making modifications to what I've already been carrying. Um, I woke up one morning, Katie. <laughs> I opened my eyes and the room was bright. And I thought perhaps my husband forgot to turn the lights, forgot to turn the lights off. And then I looked up on the ceiling and there was the pattern. A complete grid and um, see a lot, very, a lot of blues, a lot of gold and, mm -hmm. and here and there some specks of purple. And I'm just fascinated. So I wake my husband up and I said, can you see, can you see the light? And he can't. I could, but he couldn't. Since then, I've seen the pattern four times. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and there it is. But it's very interesting the changes that has taken place in my life. I mean, I had a near that experience. It awakened me fully. I went through a process of how to deal with the, the enhancement of my senses. My five senses got enhanced when I had a near that experience. But now it's like I'm being what I know is being modified and put into sequence. Like for example, Kevin, my whole diet has changed. Now I'm telling you, if a doctor had tried to change my diet this drastically, I don't think they would have gotten my cooperation. <laughs> my eating habits have changed. Breakfast is um, fruit and ginger tea. Don't ask me where that came from. And at lunchtime, I would snack on things like carrots. This, this was not my, my way of eating before. I mean, I'm a vegetarian, but this was not my way of eating. At lunchtime, I'd, I'd snack on things like, like carrots. And what was added was four dates. I find that my meditation now is not about me taking myself out. It is more about me being still and knowing. Before I would use music, I don't seem to need music anymore. And I sit on my back porch and I have these two cats, they're not mine, they belong to my neighbor. And the one comes and sits with me. And um, you know, you get into meditation and you're really quiet and you're there for about half an hour. And then after that, you begin to think about how the day is structured. And as soon as I do, the cat sits up and looks at me as though, excuse me, you're not supposed to be doing that. So I think the cat is in the pattern as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved to quiet time, quiet time in nature. Um, there's no need to kind of chant or, or play music or anything like that. As a matter of fact, I've moved to what what you find in the Bible, it says, be still and know that I am. So I've moved from doing meditation with music to being absolutely still mm -hmm. with less food in my system. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It's like it has changed my whole pattern of, of how, I, how I engage with energy. But I think most importantly is particularly when I wake up, I might wake up at three o'clock and the pattern is there. Then I feel like I get a download. There's a download of information. And then it takes about three days before it will kind of surface in the way that I can understand it. The pattern <clears throat> in my experience and analysis was put into place by what I call the originators. Mm -hmm. And the originators 
develop the pattern to uplift consciousness. Mm -hmm. And the uplift of consciousness was for all forms of consciousness. Animals, insects, people, fish, rocks, trees, plants. Everything on the planet Earth contains a vibration of consciousness. And where does the consciousness go? It opens itself up to its potential for a fuller expression. Mm. So when I'm listening to your your story and your comments, it seems to me that your experience of the pattern is an accelerated experience. Mm -hmm. Because what you've been talking about took me a long time to get to the point where I experienced the pattern many, many years and started applying it to my own life. And I found that it wasn't an application of what I learned from the pattern so much as in absorbing and mm -hmm. accepting the lessons of spirit. Mm -hmm. So in relationship to your own experience, it's an acceleration of your perception of spirit. And clearly for you, um, that accelerated learning is, is important to you, important to your soul growth. So you've embraced it. I've talked to people who have experienced the pattern. They've seen it. And that seems to be a good starting point because that creates a frame of reference mm -hmm. for going forward. But the process of accepting and absorbing the data it takes time. And for me, when linked to the pattern, consciously linked, which is kind of a frightening thing for me, is that I, I receive the data that it sends out in the form of what I call packets. My expression of what you're talking about is data packets. And we receive them and absorb them into our energy. And sometimes it goes fast, sometimes it goes slow. But the key to it is what's contained in that, that outburst of energy from higher consciousness is designed for us, is designed for our own personal evolution of consciousness that we all, that we all have. So the pattern is just the source of information and energy and learning that we need to become more than who we are right now. Mm -hmm. And people might say, well, I'm, I'm very happy with the way I am now. And I say, great. Mm -hmm. Go for it. What I see is that there's more to us than what's than what we think we are. Mm -hmm. We are capable of achieving a much higher level of consciousness through the application of the data we receive from the pattern, which is simply, it's a mechanistic process. It emits the data and we individually in a greater form of spirit know where to, where to pull the data out and through that applies to us. So what applies to you doesn't apply to me and doesn't apply to Katie, it applies to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's what you need to move into the next space of consciousness and as you pointed out it's a process mm -hmm. it sure is so the process is normal it's not different it's not exceptional it, it's fairly boring you're learning step by step you're just learning faster than other folks that I know and myself you're just simply learning faster. So you're moving at a faster rate. Uh, why? I don't know. That's your own particular destiny. And as this, this data comes forth and guides you to the next step of your own personal consciousness, you will see an expansion. An expansion is normal. The expansion is living within 
the, the creative vibration of spirit and then accepting and evolving and growing your soul in accordance with the directives and the guidance of the pattern. Your guides are the interpreters of what you need. Say that again. That is very important because people people think that their guides are their gods. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it seems that way because the guides can be pretty darn astonishing. Your a person's guide may be an incredibly brilliant experience. Another person's guide shows up like an angel. Another mm -hmm. person's guide shows up like a, a passing cloud. But the point of the guides, which they've accepted, this is their mission to accept the uplift of consciousness on the planet Earth, is to be available to you to interpret, help interpret what you're receiving. Mm -hmm. Because the data influx from the pattern is very powerful, sophisticated mm -hmm. knowledge of more than who you are. And I, I keep saying more than who you are because that's how I see why I'm here. Am I here to be the same? Am I here to repeat myself again and again and again? Do I want to come into lives where I'm just simply reliving who and what I was before? And it, it doesn't interest me. Mm -hmm. I want to be capable of absorbing a, a greater range of energy and data from the universe and find its application in life. Ooh, that's, that's you. As my granddaughter would say, Kevin, that's hugeness. <laughs> It is. It is. And for me, the, my first experience with a pattern, I was meditating and I was going in that quiet space, as you were mentioning. And something grabbed me and pulled me out. It's like a hand. And this is a very poor description of the experience. The hand grabbed me by the collar and yanked me out of my body. Well, of course, spirit bodies don't have collars, but they can be held pulled out and brought to this broader image of the grid, a white blue configuration with gold intertwining lights. And I realized that each gold light was a, for, was a consciousness, someone's individual consciousness, but it didn't seem to be crowded as we perceive. They each had their own place. Mm -hmm. They each had their reason for being. And that was okay. That was interesting. I've seen a lot of very interesting things in my experiences of traveling in spirit. But then I was pulled closer and closer to the pattern. And as I became more enmeshed with the pattern, it became a very emotional experience. It was to the point of being overwhelmed by the emotion of integrating myself with the primal source of knowledge the primal source of spiritual guidance. And after that happened, I, I knew, and this is the data packet concept, I was brought to a higher level of understanding of my life, who I am, and my placement in all forms of consciousness. And then when I came back, I really didn't know where I was, Took a while to figure out, well, I'm in my house, I'm in my chair, I'm meditating, it's four o'clock in the morning. I couldn't talk about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was stunned mm -hmm. to silence. Mm -hmm. and as my family could tell anybody, Kevin's stunned to silence is an extraordinary experience all by itself. But I couldn't talk about it for months and months. Finally, I started writing little descriptions I sent them to someone who I communicate with about these experiences and started putting the picture together because I could not articulate the experience. Mm -hmm. It was more than just a flash of light. It was more than just thunder coming out of the sky and enlightening me. It was an intimate experience of consciousness, mm -hmm. my consciousness, all consciousness. Mm. And having been left speechless, I slowly regained my speech 
to the point where I could begin to articulate the experience. Mm. Because the experience is so incredibly deep and wide and articulated. Articulated energy is where we are going. We are, we are moving towards a higher level of consciousness, what I call uplift. Uplift is my favorite word in this matter. We're being lifted up into spirit, section by section by section. And you stop and think, well, what is the section? It's like in our lives. We go through progressions of maturity, progressions of growth, and progressions of decline. Everything is segmented. The energy of the pattern is segmented and, is, and it's made for us uniquely and everybody wholly. One time I was out and I was, I was seeing whales and their energetic forms. And I could see that whales are way past human beings. Wow. In consciousness. Mm -hmm. They can articulate in a way that people don't. They use more of their brain mass. Wow. They have a lot to say. They're neither approving or disapproving. They just have thoughts that probably humans are not handling their life experience and nature very well. But that's, it wasn't a condemnation, it was an observation. Mm -hmm. So my point of, the point of this illustration is that all forms of life, whether they're animate or inanimate, contain some essential component of consciousness that is waiting to be stimulated into further growth. Mm, I like that term, waiting to be stimulated into further growth. I like that term. It's like human beings. We came from monkeys. That's a fact. And there's nothing wrong with that because spirit needed a vehicle to develop that would receive and accept consciousness. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness is a primary form of consciousness. And then we learn and we gain and we add and then we create context for consciousness. But we needed a vehicle to do that. Human beings, as we are now, are just one little step in the evolution of who we are. Mm -hmm. Human beings are very simplified, crude machines that allow spirit a location to expand itself and develop. Mm -hmm. So the, the notion that humans are the ultimate aspect of spirituality and consciousness is, as you're noting right now yourself, a little humorous. <laughs> it is. But extraordinarily arrogant. Mm -hmm. Because we are all linked together in the grid of the pattern in energy. Whether we like it or not, whether we accept or not, we are bound to each other. Mm -hmm. So divisions are clearly manufactured by cultures and by very lock folks that are locked into positionality for benefit and i'll just kind of divert a little bit from that remember that you came into a predator world mm -hmm. there are no clouds there are no angels on harps you came into a place where you could increase your knowledge of yourself and others by uplifting your consciousness in an environment that's dangerous you must learn how to survive. And we pick, each of us pick the life that we have. Why? Is it, just, is it for the abuse? Is it for the brutality? Is it for many, many? It's just simply because you decided on a soul level now, I'm not talking about personality level. On a soul level, you decided to come in in this form because it provided the opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. It takes away this whole conversation that we're here by accident. It takes away the conversation that someone is better than somebody else. 
That's a joke. Mm -hmm. As in spirit, we are whole and complete and we know each other. And I know from anecdotes and from personal experience that when we pass into spirit, we all give each other a hug and a handshake. Mm -hmm. Whoever we are, the good guy, the bad guy, the worst guy, it's because we are fulfilling a form of destiny related to the uplift of consciousness. And that peace needed to be fully expressed, even in its brutality. And also, I, I think most people are really nice. Mm -hmm. They're good souls. They're not interested in violence. They're not interested in power. They're interested in their families and their lives. So that's the general shape of the pattern and its application to daily life, at least for me. Everyone is unique in their in their uh, acceptance of the energy, acceptance of the of the learning process from the pattern. We're all unique. But we are receiving what we need to receive. Nothing more, nothing less. So if we're expanding, expanding quickly, we're just simply ready to do that it's no accident you have taken the experience of the pattern and condensed it into a shape that allowed you to expand who you are because you are ready to do that if you taken all that data and pushed it through the tube when you were younger it might have been disregarded mm -hmm. or ignored or wrapped in religion, or wrapped in cultural acceptance, or wrapped in some form of mythology. So you, you now are ready for what you experienced. And that's why things are going so quickly. Some people, it takes lifetimes and lifetimes, and hundreds of lifetimes, to move from the animal consciousness into the higher enlightened consciousness. But frankly, we all start down at the animal level. Mm -hmm. We didn't just come here with beautiful people. We learned how to be, to realize our potential on earth through the nature of the earth experience. How can you love if you don't know hate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can you know that violence doesn't serve anything other than your own personal needs and requirements? Why would you heal somebody? Why would you counsel somebody? Because you know that you now have the ability to do so. <laughs> and my whole point in the conferences coming up for IANS, of which I'm one of the side speakers, is to show that having the near-death experience, well, good or bad, however you take it, is just the beginning. Beginning, that's right. It's the awakening. It's the place at which you woke up from your deep, deep, deep sleep. It's a place to step out from. Because mm -hmm. now you know that you are more than who you think you are. Mm -hmm. And you have certain abilities, certain capabilities that will contribute to other people. So having a near-death experience is just extraordinary because you survived death. But what's more extraordinary What's more amazing is your ability to go beyond the experience, the initial experience of death, to take whatever little things happen to you during that time, many stories of healing, expanded consciousness, out-of-body travel, knowing what people are going to say before they say, those are just pieces. That's right. Pieces of who you are. So mm -hmm. use your little piece and expand your consciousness to the benefit of other people. Mm -hmm. If you can spend time thinking about others more than you think about yourself, your reality will shift. Mm -hmm. Because what you think, you're clear, though interesting and educative and so on, is just a small component of who you are. When you leave at, at death, you leave all of that stuff behind. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> yes. You have no need 
for that stuff because now you're entering your true state. Mm -hmm. You're entering the state of being a spirit, of being a soul, an expanded soul. And you realize that you're, what you did on earth is not who you are now. That's right. <laughs> and what you did on earth with your family, your friends, stays in the knowledge base of who you are forever. Coming in from birth, we all agree to forget everything. Mm -hmm. We have to. We have to. We agree to get to be locked into this thing called time space. Because we cannot learn what we need to learn in an open spiritual environment. There's just simply no opposition to our brilliant thoughts. Mm -hmm. So here you are in a body locked into the time space paradigm and wondering what the heck am I doing here? What the heck is all this all about? And you may know from experience, that's a good starting point, questioning. But what's available to you is a, is a, is a gift from the originators that allow you to pass through your questions, your doubts, and your ignorance into an expanded form of consciousness that allows you freedom. You're one little step away from freedom. And I don't mean escaping. And I don't mean, oh my God, I'm so happy. I'm no longer blah, 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 blah. Freedom is the fuller expression of your soul. You take your little tidbit of experience. 80 years is a little tidbit of experience compared to the eternal nature of the soul. And you bring that back. You take your little piece of experience, which you cherish when you're alive, because that's hard earned. And you put it in place with the totality of the knowledge of soul. And that's your contribution. And if you've been around a long time, you've got a lot of contributions to make. But mm -hmm. at some point, you'll be relieved of the responsibility to be a person. You're relieved of your responsibility to be a form of evolved consciousness. Then you go to the next step. You're, you're going to play in this game, and then when you pass on, you're going to play in a bigger game. Mm -hmm. But it's no consolation to your current life. Hmm. The only consolation in this life is acceptance of soul and spirit. And it's more than just say, yeah, I get it. Okay, I'm a spirit. I'm a soul. Da, 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 da doesn't apply to me. Well, it does apply to you. You are more than who you think you are. The pattern is mechanistic. Don't wrap it into God. Don't wrap it into theology. The pattern was put into place to uplift consciousness. And we're not the only beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. Throughout our galaxy, which has become the birthplace of consciousness in the universe, the pattern is available to us to learn. And it is, it is fairly unique to this galaxy. Because there are other forms of consciousness, other forms of life. We can't see them. They're there. They're benefiting also. And they have uplifted their consciousness and themselves in different degrees. Hmm. Some go faster, some go slower. It doesn't matter. It's like going to school at a, at a higher level of school. How do you know until you know? Mm -hmm. so the pattern is mechanistic. It's a tool. And I will not accept any conversation about it being something more than that. It's a gift to us to allow us to evolve and grow into the light. Mm -hmm. 